change is almost impossible without a new practice. This is what all the greats understood. This is what Neville Goddard understood. This is why in personal development even, we talk so much about discipline and consistency. If you've been being a certain way and things aren't working for you, you're gonna have to learn new tools and tricks and start practicing those so you can get better results. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. And we don't have to operate like we're insane. We live in 2024, and at this point in human history, ignorance is a choice. your girl Brene. Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, a little bit of housekeeping, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe and share if my content resonates with you. On this channel, I talk a lot about the law of assumption, manifestation, law of attraction, personal development, self-help, psychology, child, all the things that have helped me level up in my life. And I share here because I feel that it could be helpful to others. So if you find the content helpful, sharing is caring. Without further ado, today's topic, I wanna to talk about something that I feel doesn't get a whole lot of attention, um, at least not from what I've seen on this topic, and that is the importance of having a practice. So let me fill that void. <laughs> we talk so much about transformation and growing aware of your patterns and understanding what's working for you or what's working against you, but I think we can't have that discussion and, uh, not talk about the importance of being disciplined and consistent with a practice. And the reason I place so much emphasis on the word practice is because as Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about, your personality creates your personal reality. And what is your personality made up of? It's made up of how you think, how you behave, and how you feel. And so if we are to be honest with ourselves about parts of our personality that have con contributed to our personal reality, a lot of times when you're going on this path with law of assumption, you are being met with your program. You are being met with your assumptions about life. You are being met with how that influences what you think and how you feel, and ultimately your actions, your behavior. So. Your personality is a culmination of practiced thoughts, practiced behaviors, practiced emotions. And in order to replace something that has been practiced, you're gonna have to do what? Practice something else. And so that brings me to my premise of why having a practice is so important. And a practice is basically a routine, something that you go to, your toolbox. You return to this instead of the behaviors that you used to practice. <laughs> you return to something new, a new routine, a new behavior, a new way of thinking, something that keeps you accountable in replacing the old man with new and improved ways of behaving, thinking, and emotionally relating to your life and the circumstances and the people in your reality. And this gets reflected back to you in your personal reality because you are interacting with people and circumstances in your world. So in order to replace something that you have practiced, which we call habits, you're going to have to replace it with something else. You can't just say, I'm going to stop this habit and then have nothing else to go to when you are triggered to being in the same old patterns of thinking or emoting or emotionally relating to your reality. You have to replace those habits with something else so that your nervous system, your subconscious mind, your body is on board, okay? And then the more you practice the new replacement, that then over time becomes your new habit, your new behavior, your new way of thinking, your new way of emotionally relating to the people and circumstances in your life. So some of the things that I found very helpful 
Um, we talk so much about different techniques and techniques are absolutely fine. Um, they absolutely do work. And I'm talking about manifestation techniques, whether it's journaling and scripting, whether it's visualization, whether it's um, inner conversations, all the things, all the things, they're all great, right? Um, but I don't want you to also forget how your human brain works. And the way that we learn is through repetition. So a lot of people will try a technique here and there and oftentimes will be successful in what it is they're drawing into their experience, but then they'll fall short along the way. And this is why we find ourselves in the, in the rabbit hole of learning about manifestation because in some instances it works beautifully and in others we fail miserably. <laughs> and you're not alone. This is all a part of the human journey, the, the human experience is we came here to experience contrast. We came here to know ourselves as an extension of the divine. We came here to know ourselves as co-creators with the divine. And so that, is, that requires that we have experiences that give us opportunities. And I always say, whatever's happening in your world is really an opportunity for you to know yourself deeper, for you to know yourself as an extension of the divine, of God, of the creator. And as Neville Goddard teaches, your own wonderful human imagination is what animates this experience of yours. Basically creates your reality and your experience in this reality. So some of the things that I've found to be very helpful to me, aside from the manifestation techniques, are learning how to work with my nervous system. And Dr. Joe Dispenza, he really brought this home for me because I had been doing things on my own before I even learned about his book becoming supernatural and you know you are the placebo and breaking the habit of being yourself all amazing books um but before i even knew about those things i understood that i had to work with myself i had to be patient with my body i had to be patient with understanding how to work with my body and he helped take that understanding to the next level because through his teachings i learned what i was doing to my body by not practicing patience and being aware of how the human body works and how it's designed and how I can be a better steward to make sure that I'm not working against myself. And he talks a lot about how we are mostly operating in fight or flight mode. Fight or flight is what wrecks our nervous system, right? It's what sends signals throughout the body that, hey, I'm in danger. The problem with this is we exhibit fight or flight in everyday circumstances, in everyday interactions with people, and we're not very conscious of it. And if this is our chronic way of being, we are then contributing to our bodies being dysregulated, our nervous system being thrown out of whack, and that sending mixed signals all throughout our bodies, which ultimately contributes to disorders and disease and discomfort in our, our bodies. <laughs> And so I, I credit Dr. Joe with helping me understand that. So one of the practices that I've incorporated, and I talk a lot about on my TikTok, and even here, um, is meditation. Um, obviously, Dr. Joe talks a lot about this. That's the core of his teachings, is understanding the science and anatomy, and then implementing things like meditation to help bring you back to center, and to give you something to then practice. Um, the other thing is breath work. Breath work has been essential because me personally, I've struggled, especially from as early as I can remember with anxiety. And on my dad's side, you know, there's a lot of family members who've been diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and have to take medication for it. I never got diagnosed, I self-diagnosed because I just knew I was not <laughs> doing well with everyday, you know, functionings in certain circumstances that I encountered in my journey. Um, but having that understanding and then when I encountered Dr. Joe's work, knowing that that way of existing was not good. <laughs> it is not normal. It's normal in the sense that many people are experiencing it, but it's not normal in the sense that we were not designed to, to constantly be in a state of fear or constantly be in, a, be in a state of catastrophic thinking, which is exactly what leads to depression and anxiety your thoughts always going to the negative, which then influences your emotions and it becomes a loop, a cycle, and you're stuck in it <laughs> and it sucks. But what I've learned is like breath work 
it's one of those things that you return to something that is so foundational, so essential to our existence, yet we don't think to do it because we, we don't know. We don't know these things. But when you just take a moment to breathe deeply and intentionally and to tune in to your body and the places that you feel tension or whatever, we call it scanning, you will be surprised at how you calm yourself down, you regulate your nervous system, and from there you can think with more clarity. I often find myself telling people, listen, no matter what manifestation techniques you're doing, they're all beautiful. Again, they all work. But before you do anything and everything, check in with you. Check in with your thoughts, check in with your emotions, check in with your nervous system, and make sure that as you're doing, before you do anything, before you touch anything, before you go anywhere, before you consult, have a conversation, you check in with you. And if you need to, do some breath work because it will be a game changer for you. It will help you move through life with more clarity, more calm, and also it will reel in some of those catastrophic thoughts that you've been thinking. We talk about how thoughts are frequencies. They're like signals to the universe, right? We're sending them out and your emotions are like the magnet that draw things back in. If you are thinking catastrophic thoughts and you're feeling catastrophic emotions, you're drawing disaster. You're drawing more of the unwanted into your experience. But if you can then catch yourself when you're having a moment of catastrophic thoughts or catastrophic emotions, to regulate your nervous system through modalities like breath work, meditation, or a combination of other things that you may be aware of, EFT tapping, all the tools, they are literally tools that you have in your toolbox that you can now practice and replace the old habits with these tools that you will consider a routine or a practice as you decide to implement them. You will think with more clarity when you regulate your nervous system. You will be more proud of the decisions you make from a regulated nervous system. If it requires you to learn more about it before you try it, do that. But if you're trusting my word, and I hope you trust my word because I will not bring you nothing that I'm not doing myself, try it. Wim Hof has a compilation of videos on YouTube. Tune into his videos. They are about 11 minutes long, but they're the best 11 minutes <laughs> that you can carve out of your day or multiple times through, during the day to help you regulate your nervous system. This is something that we don't talk enough about, um, especially being African-American. I come from a, a community of people who we don't really acknowledge mental health. Millennials are doing it a lot more, thankfully, and the younger generations are acknowledging mental health a lot more. How I grew up, you know, we labeled it, you know, this person's just crazy or they're off or they developed vices, they're a crackhead or alcoholic or this, that, and the third. And what we know now is that they have vices, they're really just coping the best way that they've practiced to cope. In understanding this, we can extend grace to people and just amplify the message of checking in with self and replacing practice behaviors with better habits, better practice behaviors, new habits, um, because that practice is going to help you transform your life. Having something in place to replace old habits, old behaviors, old ways of thinking and being is so essential, is so crucial. Change is almost impossible without a new practice. And this is what all the greats understood. This is what Neville Goddard understood. This is why in personal development even, we talk so much about discipline and consistency because if you've been being a certain way and things aren't working for you, you're gonna have to learn new tools and tricks and start practicing those so you can get better results because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. And we don't have to operate like we're insane. We live in 2024, and at this point in human history, ignorance is a choice. So we gotta do better. And this is my form of doing better by not gatekeeping and keeping things like this to myself, especially because I know it works. And it doesn't matter your faith, your religion, it doesn't matter your cultural background. If you are a human and you have the same organs that I have <laughs> and you are learning how to exist through this experience, then this information is helpful.
to you. Having a practice, a new practice or a new routine is how you will experience that transformation that you're seeking. I always say that whatever it is that led you to learning about manifestation and being an intentional creator was really just a catalyst. It was almost like a trick. <laughs> like the divine's like, oh, you want this? Here you go, here you go. Ah, psych. You got to learn about you. You got to dig a little deeper. You got to understand what this experience is so that you can work it. And then you can have this thing that you want. And it just requires that you go through different experiences to peel back the layers, understanding who you are not so you can recognize who you are and walk in that power and that purpose. And yeah, that's all I have to say about practice routines. They are essential, so important. But if you've liked this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share because sharing is caring. Um, and until next time, you got this.